Hey everyone, welcome back to Phoebe Paints. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to draw a realistic eye. Eyes are known as the window to the soul. Eyes reveal so much about a character or a portrait. They can convey emotion like sadness, happiness, joy, or anger, all depending on the expression. Whether you are a beginning artist or you're an experienced artist, drawing realistic eyes is so important. Being sure your proportion is correct and shading is really going to help you improve your eye game. So stay tuned if you want to learn how you can improve your eye drawing skills. All you're going to need for this tutorial is a pencil and a piece of paper. Any kind of paper will work. If you have an eraser, that's even better. Let's get started. To get started, I like to just trace something circular like a roll of tape or a plate or container that's perfectly circular to create our iris. Once you've got your iris drawn, we're going to go into the center and draw our pupil. The pupil is the black part of your eye that dilates and contracts to allow light in. Before shading this in, we're actually going to add some highlights. So highlights are basically reflections of light in your pupil and iris that give your eye that twinkle of life. The next step in drawing your eye is to sketch out the top of the upper eyelid. The top of the upper eyelid can usually be found by taking the arc of the iris and moving it up. This will vary depending on your reference photo. Gradually connect the arch of the eyelid down towards the center of the pupil. There should be a gradual and soft slope without harsh lines. The next step is to define the sclera or the whites of the eyes on either side of the pupil. Oftentimes, a mistake that new artists make is showing the sclera below the iris. This only happens if your subject is looking up or is expressing an emotion such as shock or surprise. In my reference photo, I can see that there's only a little bit of the sclera showing in either side of my pupil. An important thing to note is that your eyelid often ellipses or covers the top part of your iris. Your inner eye has a portion known as your tear duct. I like to draw tear ducts like a C or U shape. It's always important to connect your lower lid line to the iris to avoid a look of fear or surprise or an upward cast angle. Back to our tear duct. There's usually a pink area here that's actually responsible for the production of tears. We can add circles to represent highlights to show some more detail in our tear duct. And if you make a mistake, don't be afraid to erase. That's what erasers are for. Now that we've got the basic form of our eye, we can start to add some details. One detail I notice in my reference photo is that there's a slight corner happening at this outer edge of my eye. I can also see a tear line going along my lower eyelid. Another detail you can add is eyeliner or lashes. A huge mistake I see artists often make is drawing their eyelashes as eye shapes rather than a J shape. Eyelashes are curved, they're not straight, so by all means, avoid an eye shaped eyelash. Eyelashes are usually longer on the outer edges of your eye and shorter on the inner one. If you imagine dividing your eye in half, Eyelashes on this side will curve out to the left, and this side will curve to the right. Eyelashes clump together, so try and draw them as shapes rather than individual lines. Drawing two or three eyelashes in one group often makes them look more realistic. Often, artists exaggerate their lower lash lids a little bit too much. And even though I have some mascara on, they're still really small, so try and keep these a little less thick and a lot shorter. Last but not least, we need to add a brow to this eye. Your brow arch is really just drawn using a light feathering brush stroke, like little tiny hairs. Don't block it in too sharp or too densely at first as it'll look really fake and flat. Eyebrow shapes are all different depending on the individual, so this is just a general rule of thumb and not necessarily an end-all be-all rule. Now that we've got the basics of our eye, it's time to darken some of these values. One of the darkest values in your eye is that center pupil. You can go ahead and apply a lot of pressure here to really darken that value almost to a pure black. 
A tip I love to use is taking a piece of paper to hold under my hand to prevent smudging while I shade. When shading your iris, I find it's helpful to imagine drawing a sun like you would draw a sun back in like first grade. There's a lot of pigment that kind of radiates from the pupil outwards, so just do a bunch of lines and strokes like this. There's a cast shadow underneath of your upper eyelid, so this portion of your eye might be a little bit darker. The outer edges of the iris are often usually darker as well, so try and darken the lines as you reach the outer edge. Once you're happy with the shading of your iris, you can move on to the tear duct. Since the tear duct is responsible for tear production, it often is wet and has a lot of different highlights on it. It is making tears after all. Trying to leave certain areas white while shading the rest gray will give it the illusion that it's actually wet. When shading your sclera, a lot of times people think it's purely white, but there's actually a ton of shadows happening here. Underneath of your eyelid is one area that might be shaded, as well as the corners of your eye. One of my favorite tips for shading is actually using a Q-tip. This is because the oils in your finger can bind with the paper, and if you make a mistake while shading, it's impossible to erase. Try and consider the directionality of your shading as you work. For example, if your sclera is round, you want to kind of mimic that round motion rather than going in a straight up and down motion. With excess shading materials on the end of your Q-tip, you can actually start to shade the skin around the eye. This creates a really smooth and almost airbrushed finish. When shading your lower eyelid, it's important to leave a small area white as there's actually a small thin water line that reflects light. Before I draw on my lashes, I actually wanna go in and do the upper eyelid shading first. This way I'll be able to blend without smudging the detail of the lashes. Again, I'm just working my pencil in the direction of the surface. So for here, I'm trying to arch my pencil to mimic the shape of the eyelid. I can see that it gets a lot darker as it approaches that upper crease. This could also be because of the makeup I was wearing, I'm not sure. Then using my Q-tip, I just blended that area out to create a smooth transition. Once I'm happy with my shading, I'm gonna take my darkest value pencil or use complete pressure with my normal pencil to go in and add the eyelashes. Last but not least, it's time for our brows. So I'm just gonna feather them in. Again, using my paper to protect all that awesome shading we just spent so much time on. And I'm just gonna create small brush stroke motions. All right guys, that's all I've got for today's video. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And drop a comment below with your favorite eye drawing tips from the video. Thanks for watching, see ya.